we're now going to talk about how we can recognize when we found an upper or lower bound. So remember, an upper bound is a number that no rational zero is larger than. And a lower bound is a number that no rational zero is smaller than. The problem is that, that doesn't that those definitions don't help us find them. So what we want to know is the following. If k is greater than zero and each number on the last row of the, of the division is positive or zero, k is an upper bound. Okay. If k is less than zero, and each number on the last row of the division alternates in sign, then k is a lower bound. So there's an important thing to recognize here. An upper bound can only be positive and a lower bound can only be negative. You don't need to look for upper bounds in the lower numbers or lower bounds in the positive numbers. But here's how it works in practice. Suppose that we have the following function. f of x equals 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus x minus 2. And what we want to do is find the bounds. And this is not something you're typically going to be asked to do, because normally it's not worth looking for numbers that you know won't work. But bear with us, what we want to be able to show is just how to find these. So, we're going to start with the upper bounds. And so we're going to take the function and we're going to evaluate it, or divide it by... 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, until we find the bound. So, we take 2, 5, 1, minus 2, and we divide by 1. We'll notice that every number here is positive, so 1 is an upper bound. It's not even worth looking at any other number because the first number we tried was an upper bound. I'm just going to demonstrate what happens if we choose 2. Notice that it's just as positive and is just as much of an upper bound, but we want to use the more limiting one, which is 1. So in this particular case, our upper bound is, is 1. There is no integer that will work. Well, our lower bound is just found by doing the same thing, but with negatives, and so on. So we'll start with negative 1, 2, 5, 1, minus 2. That's minus 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, which is minus 3, which is minus 2, which is 2, which is 0. So it turns out that I found a 0 here, but notice it's not a lower bound. There might be more, just because it didn't alternate signs. Well, minus 2. We'll need just a little bit more room to keep working. 
bring down the 2, that's a minus 4, which is a 1, which is a minus 2, which is a minus 1, which again is a 2 and gives me a 0. <laughs> it turns out I found another 0, which isn't exactly what I'm trying to do here, but it does give us our answers that we're looking for. Okay, and minus 3, 2, 5, 1, minus 2, 2, minus 6 is minus 1, 3 is 4, that's minus 12, minus 14. Notice we alternate signs every time, so the lower bound is minus 3. Now what you're really looking for when you solve these particular types of problems is that you're trying to find when you plug a number in, you want to determine if it is an upper or a lower bound, and if it is, then you're done looking. But here's the idea, is that we're just looking for sign changes, or we're looking for everything being positive. And if you find either of those with the appropriate C, then you found a bound.